wondering, there is a book called The Brick Testament, and uh, the whole Bible is in Legos. You can get it by, I actually think only have Genesis, but you can get the Old Testament or the New Testament or, you know, both together. So just in case you were wondering, Brick Testament is a book and it's also online, bricktestament.com. Um, so, tomorrow is going to be quite the day, huh? Yep. Tomorrow is opening day for the Nationals. This might be the year that they're going to go all the way, and I am ready. Okay, I guess if you are an Orioles fan, then Tuesday, then Tuesday is the day. But it is that time of year that when we hear this music, Charge! <laughs> we all know that's what we say, right? I mean, we could just sit there and eat our popcorn and hot dogs and drink our Slurpees and our beers and watch the game. But we shout charge like a bunch of wild banshees. So, basically, because if we can't go out there and hit a triple for the home team, or we can't strike out the cleanup batter. We have to do something. We have to say something, scream something, to show that we're all in for the home team. So charge is our way of participating in the game. It's our response to the game. And whether we're winning or losing, we shout charge to show that we still believe. And we aren't going to give up even when, well, let's be frank, we'll even sing it when we're down 11 to 2 in the bottom of the 8th inning, we'll still shout it. Because you just never know. We might just win the game. Well, we have in the church a charge also. And it goes like this. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! Sunday, we shout this loudly and boldly. And sometimes we need a little encouragement to be a little bit louder. Christ is risen. Christ has been raised from the dead. Death has not won. Life has triumphed on Easter. And love has infected the world. As much as I might struggle, with what I could possibly have to say on Easter besides, he is risen indeed. The one thing I can't help but say is Easter is a game changer. Easter declares you are loved by God in an unexplainable, irrevocable, exceptional way. That is what a resurrected Christ on Easter morning announces to the cosmos and it announces it to you and to me. And to that, we all shout, indeed, with strong, definitive voices. We say, yes, we believe. This is true. Indeed is the charge of the church. Any questions? Well, yes, actually, Actually, I have quite a few questions, if I'm really honest. How does an empty tomb say that? Empty doesn't necessarily mean anything good. Typically, it means, if you're me, all the chocolate is gone. Or, if you're also me, the orange juice container is empty once again. Or, it could mean that the bank account doesn't have enough money to pay the bills. An empty tomb. Great. And why not have witnesses? I mean, really, God, it would make it all a lot more believable if some people had actually seen you rise from the dead. It would take
take a lot of the guesswork out of it. Or, my other question is, why not special effects? Those I want too. Luckily, in today's reading, we do at least get some dazzling white angels, but a drum roll or some fireworks or a smoke screen would be impressive. Plus, my idea with the smoke screen is it would explain the big question that actually bothers me the most. Where in the world is Jesus? If there was a smoke screen, then I could say maybe Jesus sneaked off while I wasn't looking because he's noticeably absent. So a body would be nice. So sure, let's shout our indeed, but let's be clear what we're claiming here. We're in the bottom of the eight, and we're down 11 to 2. The chances of us winning are slim to none. Because experience teaches us that death wins. The truth is, I'd like to know why. If Jesus conquered death once and for all, why it doesn't seem like he's followed through with that promise. And I'm not really trying to be critical of Jesus here, especially on Easter and all, but it's a fair enough question, don't you think? On this Easter, it is fairer and more honest to admit that most of the time, our indeeds are tentatively whispered to the truth that Christ has risen. Most of the time, we say indeed with question or sarcasm or confusion, or shock. Not so much the whole fist pump we get going one Sunday a year. We say indeed, but what are we saying indeed to? According to the resurrection story today, we say indeed to no witnesses, no body, no special effects. That's what we proclaim here today. And praise be to God that Easter happens despite and because of all of those things. Because when exactly does Easter happen for the women at the tomb? When do they have their indeed moment? Because it doesn't happen when they notice the stones roll away. And it doesn't happen when they see the angels. And it doesn't happen when they look in and see that Jesus isn't there. It doesn't even happen when they see his PJs all folded up. No, at none of these moments does Easter happen for the women. Easter, life and love, happens for them with one word. Remember. Remember how he told you. Ah, indeed. Remember what Jesus said. Remember what Jesus promised, that the Messiah would be raised from the dead, that life would win, and that love would prevail. Remember, that's when Easter happens for them. These women run back in confidence. They've just seen the play of a lifetime, and everyone else looks at them like they totally missed the call. And the whole game is under review. I can see them now nodding their heads, pumping their fists, and swinging their towels, yelling, charge, or in this case, indeed, Christ is risen, alleluia. Because when Easter happens for them, they responded. That's when the resurrection occurred, and not one moment before. The resurrection for them occurred when they remembered. Just like in the baseball game, the indeed is our response. It's where we participate in the resurrection, when we remember. But now wait, you know, back up there. Did you hear what I just said? That Jesus, that we participate in the resurrection. We think that Jesus is the one that's raised from the dead. He's the one that strips away the burial claws and leaves the tomb behind and takes off down the road. Easter is about Jesus' resurrection, right? What does this have to do with us? Today we celebrate Jesus. 
Well, I'd say it has a lot to do, to do with us. Because for Easter to be more than just a magical, fluffy concept, which gets celebrated once a year in the midst of corn syrupy, jelly beans, and hard-boiled eggs, then we proclaiming, then how we proclaim Jesus' resurrection today is essential. And it's not essential to maintaining tradition, and it's not essential to maintaining story. But it is essential to life. Because we are the women, and we are the disciples today. We are the ones who remember. We remember when we ourselves have been raised from the edge of death. We remember when we stood on the rim of silence. And we remember when we sat in a dark room, defeated and alone, mm -hmm. grieving for someone we lost. Mm -hmm. We remember when life seemed hopeless and just full of waiting. Yes, on Easter, these are the things that we say indeed to, because we know that they are what life holds. And then, when we remember that, we remember Jesus' promise. That life comes from death. That he will be raised. And we remember being raised from our own dark tombs. And we know in the deep, shuttered places of our hearts that the only reason we had an inkling that life was possible again was because of what Jesus had said, had promised. And we remember, and we respond indeed, Jesus has done this. When we say indeed, it's not actually to no witnesses. It's to more witnesses than we can count. And it's not actually there's nobody there's more bodies of Christ than we can count. And it's not that there are no special effects, but the fact that we're surrounded by so many special effects that we hardly take notice of them anymore. So I may struggle with how to proclaim the amazing miracle of resurrection with any amount of majesty and loveliness and wonder, anywhere close to equaling the event so long ago. But I am beginning to get why God made the resurrection encounter that first Easter morning so darn normal. It's not just about that proclamation on this day. And it's most certainly not about what I have to say. It's about your indeed. It's about how we respond and what we say indeed to. Because couldn't you be the witness that the resurrection story so longs for? And couldn't you be the body that we so much long to see in this story? And couldn't you be the special effect that caused people to take notice of Christ? And maybe you can say yes to that, indeed to that, because you know that you've been raised right alongside of Jesus. But maybe you can't. Maybe it's all just a bit too much to believe, and that's okay. Because you know what? There are many, many people out there who wonder the same thing. What's Easter all about? Is the resurrection true? And the truth is, you and they might be resurrected from the honest state of, this is too much to believe. The disciples and the women thought that that first Easter morning. I'll tell you something I know. We don't have to hit it out of the park. Jesus does that. We keep getting up to bat, taking our swings, but not to win the game. It's already been done. We, because of Jesus, get to participate in this amazing game of life. We get to participate in love and in life, in a miracle, and the greatest story ever told. I was telling a friend of mine, who doesn't regularly attend church, that Easter and the resurrection are sort of like opening day. And at first he thought I was a little bit nuts. But I explained why to him, and then he said, well, I got it now. I have the perfect thing for you for your sermon about baseball and Jesus. So I was all ears, let me tell you. And 
so he shares with me this quote from Mark Giamatti about baseball. And this is it. It breaks your heart. It's designed to break your heart. The game begins in the spring when everything else begins again. Who knew? Bart Giamatti. Yes, Easter breaks your heart. It's designed to. But Easter's promise, Jesus' promise, that we remember and live from that broken heart comes new life from that. The promise is that on opening day, it all begins again. Today is opening day. So as excited I am for baseball to start, I'm actually much, much more excited for Easter's opening day into your life and my life and into this world. Because you know Jesus is out there on the pitcher's mound shouting, play ball. <coughs> and we're up, responding, indeed. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen.